I know it's a little hot now, but I'm about to make it as my brother used to say, Africa hot. So greetings all you astroturf, disruptive, fishy, radical, un-American extremists, terrorist, Nazi, Neanderthal, mobsters. You are my kind of people. Who, who, who said there wouldn't be any black people here? And I, there's the two of us right here. looked in that camera in front of that little guy sitting in front of us and we said to everybody and everybody in the crowd reiterated dump Harry Reid it's time he goes we're taking America back one politician at a time if necessary your stimulus is short of us just a socialistic scheme the only it's killed the American dream. You want to take from achiever. Somehow you think that's fair. Redistribute to those folks. Walk it out of their easy chair. We're having a tea party for the plan. Yes, we are. If you love this country, come on and join now, man. We're standing up for freedom and liberty. America in 2010. This socialist nightmare must come to an end. Cause we're gonna vote them out in 2010. I can speak as I please. I want to find my freedom restored. My Reed Pelosi Blue will soon melt away. Cause we're taking the house.
You can make a difference in this upcoming election cycle, whether any of us like to admit it or not, the 2010 elections are already upon us. People are declaring for candidates. Heck, you can go up here and meet all sorts of people who have declared for, to run for office in 2010. You know, it was interesting, it was about a year ago today that I was in St. Paul, Minnesota, the Republican National Convention. Some of you may have been there, others may have seen it on television. You notice on a Wednesday night, I had the great honor that only one person in America had to stand in that basketball arena and be the person in this country to place in the nomination the name of John McCain to be President of the United States. Earlier in that evening, I went to that big podium in that arena and spoke to the American people about why I thought Senator McCain was prepared to be President of the United States. You may have heard me say that he knew in the core of his soul that life begins at conception. You may have heard me say that he wanted to win the war against terror, not simply end it. And he also knew that in the middle of a recession you don't raise taxes. My friends, but more than half of the American people disagreed with us and that's because they got caught up in his quest for hope and change. We're just here just hoping he changes. There are Democrats in this crowd, there are Republicans in this crowd, and there's a funny thing that happens, and we keep getting asked by reporters, oh, how many Democrats, and you know which ones are dead? No, I, we don't ask people what their registrations are. We're Americans. The nonpartisanship taking place here is that if you take any hot button issue from a menu of hot button issues and you throw it out there, you're going to find people in this crowd who will disagree and argue passionately all sides of those issues. But when it comes to their country, the Constitution that protects our right to hold and argue passionately those positions, we become one. Yeah. Everything becomes secondary to that because without the Constitution we can't argue those points of view and there are people in our government who seek to shut us down. We owe it to our troops, to the men and women that have wore the uniform to keep this country from going to a socialism country. We cannot let that happen folks. We have got to tell Congress that they have got to get their spending under control and that they need to live fiscally and financially sound to stop spending more money that they're taking in and to quit borrowing money from China. Yeah. Taking all the power up in Washington, D.C. Pretty soon they'll loan us all, they'll control both you and me. They'll tell us when to work and play, they'll tell us when to pray. And we'll no longer be the United States, we'll be the U.S.S.L.A.